So just a short illustration. Um, when we ask God for something, he already knows what it is that we need. But we go to him in faith, and we ask for it in faith. And then something happens. We don't see it happen straight away. We take a step aside and we move on and try and do our own things. God is saying, I will deliver to a place, a street called faith. Stay in the street called faith. I cannot deliver to a street called doubt because I can't go there. He can only deliver in a street called faith. So once you've asked for something, stand, stand firm, keep your faith because God will deliver. Through the dry wilderness, let everything that has breath praise, praise the, Lord. the Lord. And the harvest seems to be non existent when there are no grapes upon the vine, praise when the, the flock are scattered. When there's more month at the end of the budget. When we seem to be facing endless crisis. When the gates of the prison are shut. When we hear the clanging of the door. And the jingling of the chains. And the clicking of the lock. Something in us says. Let's pray. Praise the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you in the valley, Lord. Let praise you, Lord. Let us pray. Praise the Lord. Lift my voice and say, You are. Yes. Let everything. We lift our voice and we declare Our God is great Our God is awesome Our God is powerful Our God will meet all our needs According to His riches in glory Nothing is too difficult Nothing is impossible Oh, we ride up into the heavenlies And we, like eagles, soar We run and we will not grow weary we will run and we will not faint. We will rise up like eagles on wings. 
and declare let everything that has breath let everything that has breath oh praise the Lord 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 everything that has breath praise the Lord Right now is the time to receive your breakthrough. Right now is the time to say, I'm not just in a place of singing songs. I'm not just in a place of even worshipful admiration. But I'm standing in the presence of the glory. And in the glory there is more than enough to meet all my needs according to His riches and glory. There's enough to take care of every care and every heaviness and every burden and every hardship that you're facing right now, right now in the glory realm. You can see through the glory realm, like seeing through a window, and you see the garden bursting in flower, bursting in color, bursting with new life. See through the window, out of the dark room, out of those uh, stained windows, out of those out of those dirty walls, out of that, that, that hard floor, you look through that window and you say, yes, I praise the Lord. I praise the Lord. I praise the Lord. Ooh, that's what we do this morning. We say, Lord, to you, we praise the glory and honor and majesty. Our Father, our God, He is greater than our hearts. He is greater than our hearts. Our hearts can deceive us. But our Father is greater than our hearts. He is greater than the situations and the circumstances you find yourself in. And I just want to ask you right now to allow God to be greater than your situation greater than your circumstance, greater than your heart, greater than your mind. The Word of God says bring everything down. It actually says it's more powerful than God. Everything has to go under His authority. So if your situation feels more powerful than who God is, bring it down under the authority of God in the name of Jesus. And I want to pray for those that are finding themselves in a situation where they feel that their circumstances are greater than the God that we serve. I want to pray deliverance. I want to pray restoration. I want to declare the leadership, the authority of the king of the kingdoms, of the Lord of the lords, the Lord of your heart who will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. So that the peace of God, which belongs to you, knowing that God who works everything together for good, because he is in love with you, because he is in love with you, he will work out your situation. He will work out your circumstances. He is greater than your mind. He is greater than your heart. And he is definitely greater than your situation and circumstance. And we want to worship that God. We want to praise that God. We want to adore that God. We want to say he is our father. He is our daddy. And he is more than able. We will sing till the earth echoes the heavens. Sing his praise till we see the other side. Cause we belong to the light when the night is at its darkest. Just hold on, for the dawn will soon arrive. Amen, amen. The dawn will soon arise. Hallelujah. Woo. I feel like I just had a time of uh, heavenly 
operation in my soul. I felt I had a, a moment of heavenly at the knees anesthetic. <laughs> heavenly anesthetic. And I just like, uh, wow, Lord. I hope people aren't just singing songs right now. I hope they, they step in because there's something here that's, that's intoxicating in just mind renewal, in a, a spirit mind renewal, not a, a, not a knowledge mind renewal. We've got, we got so much knowledge we could sink the ship with it. But the glory of the anointing is something completely on a different level. And <laughs> I, don't, I don't want you. To, I want you to see yourself waking up tomorrow morning. Okay, you got a picture? You're waking up. I know it's not a pretty sight, but I see you sitting on your bed and just for a few moments holding your hand out and saying, "Holy Spirit, new bread." My daily bread. You're my daily bread. You're the air I breathe. Your, your word is like honey. It's a light. Lord, you, you, are my, you are my breath right now. The same spirit that raised from Jesus from the dead is dwelling in me. And now, Holy Spirit, like you did to those early apostles, would you fall on me? Would you shake me? Would you shake this place? Would you shake wherever I go? Not with a physical, outward, visible, tangible looking shaking, but with a spiritual uh, atmosphere that is transforming and opens doors that seem shut and puts you in opportunities that you never dreamed of or imagined and months of hard work and labor to produce one small outcome suddenly is done in just a few days. And you sit there and you say, okay, Lord, just for these few moments now, I dare not face this day blowing in my own sails. Excuse the uh, reference. I, I love that prophetic word, and I'm going to actually talk into that. But I want another wind to blow. I want another wind to blow today. I, I, I want that heavenly wind to blow into my. I want my sails to billow with that heavenly wind, and just sit there for a few moments, minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, whatever it takes. I want to tell you, it's going to transform your life. It's going to transform. Your And then, and then pray for t- in tongues for about 10 hours. No. Don't blow in your own sails. Just let the Holy Spirit blow. You, know, you don't even have to say much when the Holy Spirit's blowing. I'm getting a lot of feedback here. Sorry. Or is that the wind blowing? I thought it was feedback. Okay. Can you not hear feedback? Well... Is if this noise in my head is not worrying anyone out there, then it must be the Lord speaking to me. Amen? I pray for you that the best is yet to come. I pray that you go from glory to glory, from one measure of His presence to a greater measure of His presence. I pray that wherever you go, new doors will open up and opportunities that uh, are going to surprise you. I ask the Father in Jesus' name that the fruit of the Spirit in your life is going to come to maturity. You're going to love where it was so easy to be resentful. You're going to have peace where it was so easy to to be anxious. You're going to have have, uh, self-control where where things were just out of your control. You're going to find patience in situations like me driving to church this morning and getting stuck behind a taxi that are going to melt away and not be 
such a, that, that, that's the, the, the smallest fruit on my tree, okay? That one's still growing. But I pray those fruits grow in your life. Amen? Oh, man. We're going to take up the offering this morning, but as I was looking at the bags, I was thinking, gee, what a great morning for a miracle. You know, your pastor, well, Steve, doesn't like to talk about money too much, but every now and then I just feel there's an anointing. And I feel like God wants to say to you, He can do abundantly above all you ask or imagine. And when we give today, whether it's just uh, we've already EFT'd, but we're giving in faith by just releasing out of our hands, or whether your, your wife left a bit of cash in your pocket after she went shopping, can those come up and take the bags? I, I just I felt to do something different. We don't do this every day. If you're visiting and you another church, I'm sure you you, you are you, you know that we're not uh, locking the doors to take your money. But I, I feel we need to add a bit of faith. Who brought that prophetic word? God's not going to the street called doubt. Was that? Why was it? <laughs> there you go. I'm at your street right now. I, I'm right at. I, I delivered into the post box. It's called the post box of faith. I just felt like maybe we do need to add something to our giving. That's not just, well, you know, the lights need to be paid for and we need a gardening service. And of course, you know, we need a cappuccinos. But just something of abundantly above all we ask or imagine. I felt that there was such an anointing for that. Thank you. Ever shared that? You, you shared that testimony. I, I mean, it took, took a lot of. You know, confidence to just step up and share something like that, and uh, but but it, I felt so it released something. I thought, yes, why why not? I, I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to play tricks on you, but but say it aloud. Why not me? Say it again. Why not? You know, why not? If he can do it for that one, he can do it for that one, he can do it for that one. I sense there's a, there's a change in the atmosphere. Contrary to the worldly standards of evaluation, there's a heavenly kingdom deposit that's going to supply us. Thank you for taking up the offering. As you do that, we bless that out of your wallet into the kingdom of God for his glory forevermore. Amen. Everyone received the notices today when they came in? I hope you did. If you didn't, please pick one up on your way out. You'll see all the information that you need is over there. I would like to elaborate on the comrades, all those people who fell on their heads as babies. <laughs> I've come a long way. So much so that I thought, you know, let's get a bunch of Christians on the road to mingle with the others, with the parents of the kids who fell on their heads. It's just go and mingle with them a little bit and, and just show a bit of love and show a bit of spirit and show a little bit of kindness. And at least if, if you're in near one of those five groups and you don't know where to go to watch the comrades and you didn't have anything pre-planned, go along. They, they on a route. There's a, a WhatsApp that's been sent out. If you haven't received it, just contact one of the leaders or, or somebody to send you that WhatsApp. It's got all the information on it. Five stations where there are going to be um, uh, visible, um, familiar faces. As you can see down this middle thing, Dave and Penny over here, they're going to be up in the mountains where it's snowing in Esagar. And then you've got Alec and Jackie, they're on the main road. You got Tams and Richard, uh, a meeting, and Steve Jabeir, and then the wheelers right at the bottom. You know? We're going to catch the last ones coming in. God help him. God help him. And uh, let, here at Ten Harvey Road, doors are going to be open. Some people will arrive and go, well, what's happened? But the music's going to be playing loud. 
there's going to be a path cut up to the top. There's great security on Comrades Day. Probably the safest day of the week or the year. And people will be up there. There might there'll be a table, a couple of bottles of beverages, and just kind of join in. I heard this morning where our group, where we're going to meet, there's already a stand there doing fundraising with booty rolls. You say, you eat booty rolls, Pastor. How do I, how do I think I got into this shape? Eh? Eh? Who's a shape? Don't be like that, now. Nah? Don't look at me like that. And uh, so next Sunday, we are completely desecrating the Sabbath and joining in with the heathen. But there's a concept. Well, there's a thought. <laughs> Maybe Jesus actually meant what he meant, what he said in Acts chapter 1 when he said, you're going to be in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. And maybe that's what Peter needed to be told to eat crayfish and prawns and calamari and snails. Because there's some parts of the world that that's what they eat and that's all they eat. And if you don't eat your da, so you better get with the system. You're not in the desert without a refrigerator anymore. You'd countries that know how to cultivate those things. So, get where they are. Sprinkle the salt out of the cellar into the community. There's a thought. There's an idea. Come on, visit one of those, those areas. Even if you are somewhere else, just go down and say hi. You know? See your lovely familiar faces. I, I like that prophetic word. So have I covered everything? I feel like I'm, I'm a little dazed. It's a nice dazed. Yeah. It's now been doing cartwheels and up and down and rolling. Maybe a bit of barking. Yeah. I don't know what's this with this barking. Um, it's only nine in the morning. These men are not drunk as you suppose. But that which is written by the prophet Joel, that in the last days I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams, and even upon my handmaidens I'll pour out my spirit, says the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Brian. You got me going there. I knew I was here for a reason today. Kind of picked up on that prophetic word. Um about the blowing. Bible, blowing is a, an amazing word in the Bible. Because when God created fish, he spoke to the sea. When he created birds, he spoke to the sky. When he created man, he spoke to himself. And he said, let us create. And he took the el eight elements, whatever we made out of, in the physical. And he constructed something. And then what did he do? He breathed. He breathed on a new creation. A new creation which was going to cover the earth, build communities, invent amazing things, amazing electric-powered racing cars and space travel jets and have a whole lot of fun surfing and fishing and scuba diving without selfishness, greed, envy and jealousy where everybody lives the standard life of a, a million, multi-million air because there's so much going around. It's like, no, no, please, you can have my, other, my eight TV. I don't need it anymore. You know, that, that, that 16th Jaguar of mine, really. I don't know where to leave it. I mean, you, you know, I mean, I'm, talking, I'm talking in the natural, but I hope you catch it. That there is enough. God made enough for everybody. And more. And abundantly more for everybody. But for corruption and greed and jealousy. The world has been robbed. But he breathed on this in his image. And he breathed on man. He created them male and female. Created them male and female. There was no competition between them. There was no hierarchy between them. There were no levels. It was just, they were his mankind. Created. Male and female. They just had different plumbing because they needed to populate the earth. 
and have some fun along the way. But his whole purpose was a planet in the garden, walking with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as God. Walking with God in the garden, the same God who had enjoyed intimacy and communion from eternity past into eternity future, which I've said so many times, I'm going to keep on saying it, because I want you to, to see that God wasn't a lonely God that needed a couple of friends. God was just such a happy God. He needed to extend his family and include us in that family. So he breathed. He didn't breathe on the rhino. He didn't really breathe on the baboon. He didn't breathe on the tarantula. Breathe. And then there was just a big mess. You can go right through the Old Testament. Exodus. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, on and on and on and on and on and on. God working out his covenant, working out his furniture to explain his eternal purposes. Christ, in the fullness of time, in the perfect time, comes on the scene and he says, there's a new king in town. And this king is going to build a new creation. And this creation is going to be called my church. Because on this rock, I will build my church. Speaking to Peter and the apostles. And while we see a building, God sees a community meeting in a shelter to keep the rain off them. Fellowshipping, learning to love one another, as iron sharpens iron, dealing with the jealousy and corruption and all the other fallenness of our nature that was part of the old man. And he baptizes us into a new creation. And what does he say to his disciples before he leaves? Don't leave. Jerusalem because daddy's about to breathe again not the first creation but a new creation and this new creation is going to be birthed in the breath of God as his gift comes and it's the fire presence of the Holy Spirit Jesus as God has now ascended into heaven He's done what God needed to do on earth in the divine exchange and bringing about the new kingdom inauguration. But now was Holy Spirit's turn to say, I am going to fill this people with the same spirit that was in Jesus as a man on earth, being fully God and fully man, and they are going to be the government of the new creation kingdom on earth. And I don't know about you, but 2,000 years has felt like a long time. In heaven, maybe it's just two days. I thought of that. You know, Jesus came, he's done his work, Holy Spirit goes two days later. Hey guys, I think it's ready now. Too late. We look. We look. <laughs> Middle Ages, Dark Ages. First World War, Second World War, Third World War, Fourth World War. I'll take those words back. Wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes. And hello. God says, I got it. He who began a good work in you will continue until that day. And he says, I will build my church. My new government headquarters on earth. The breath was mutinized in Genesis. The breath of the Holy Spirit will never be extinguished. And even this morning as we worship, we could just have a sense, just a, a faint preview of the love that's going to be surrounding us in eternity. But there's 
time on earth, Jesus said, wait in Jerusalem, because I'm sending the Holy Spirit. When I send the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit came, Peter stood up and said to the people that were questioning this noise, he said, this is the gift that Jesus promised. When he ascended, he gave gifts. When he, before he ascended, he said, wait in Jerusalem, I'm giving gifts. So all of a sudden, they fill with gifts, and Ephesians elaborates this a bit more by saying that some of these gifts were apostles, they were the guys that went ahead and put the flag in the ground and said, we're going to take this territory back. The prophet who came in, declared the word of God, like Peter did on the day of Pentecost, stood up and preached strong. And then you'll have evangelists, all those that in, in Acts, in Acts 2.14, wherever they went, it says they spread the word of God. They spread it. Sorry the verses aren't coming up, but these are the, you take me notes, you have to write very fast in this church. But in Acts 2 verse 14, Peter preaches. In 41, all oh, these thousands of people are saved, and then they find each other, and they start worshiping together and breaking bread together. And God was in their midst and working. They were back in the garden, walking with God without fear and condemnation and guilt. And then we see that he added the apostles and teachers into the church. Acts 13, it says, now down in Antioch, there were prophets and teachers. So you've got apostles, you've got prophets, you've got teachers. Then you've got Stephen and Timothy acting as evangelists. And you have all of these working together, as we saw last week, as paint colors on an artist's easel, transforming and conforming the church according to Ephesians chapter 4, that was up just now, to the full measure of the fullness of Christ. That's what the church looks like when the prophet's allowed to do his work, the evangelist does his work, the pastor comes in behind and does his work, and they all do it differently, and they're all different colors on this easel that are painting his image over the church. That's what it means that he's the head. We're beginning. We've already begun. We've already crossed the finish line of looking like him because we were given the same righteousness of Jesus as he was given the same sin of mankind. We stepped over a line. We finished the line. But now we are being transformed into his likeness from glory to glory. And you can take the same sermon, give it to a pastor. Say, take a sermon on on the second return of Christ. Give it to a pastor. The same outline. Everyone will leave feeling comforted. You give that same script to an apostle and he preaches of it. Everybody stirred up to go be part of a church plant. You give that same script to an evangelist and he preaches it. And everyone's thinking, man, people have got to get saved. That guy I work with, that guy lives next door to me. I've got to step out of my comfort zone. I've got to see people come to know Jesus. I've got to give this away. You give that same teaching to a teacher, and all of a sudden you understand pre-millennium, post-millennium, preterist, partial preterist, rapture, theory 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, the beast, the antichrist. Because we can't be a one color for all church. We'd be lopsided. People who've only been in a pastoral model. Oh, they come into an evangelistic church and they go, there's no love here. There's no love in this church. No, maybe you're the love that needed to come in the church. So you can get to love somebody who needed to be loved. But don't try and change the poor preacher if he's an evangelist because he's building a different culture. And anyway, why should one voice of these five be the only voice heard? Because then you get a lopsided church. I hear people say to me, 
oh, Steve, you're not preaching enough. You need to preach more. Or this one or that one. Uh, well, not so much me, but the others. You know, they get told, you're not preaching enough. You should preach more. We miss you. Yeah. I'm glad you miss them because it shows that they are bringing some of the teacher in. They're bringing some of the prophet in. They're bringing some of the evangelist in. We had a strong apostolic word from Rob, maybe more prophetic, but very apostolic. And the church thrives under that. And it grows and it develops. And it's got river banks for the glorious river to throw, flow through. And we can be unintimidated by other people's gifts. Because when you're looking at someone else's path, be careful. You don't step with your own. Oh, look. You know, sure, he looks so glamorous to be an evangelist. Let me see how, look what he's doing. God's got this prophetic path for you. But you're so looking at where he's going and trying to compete with them or trying to... You miss your own path. As an administrator, as a business person, as a mother, as a doctor, as a mechanic. Closing for the seventh time. Being conformed to the full measure of Christ. These five gifts aren't always what you expect, but sometimes they're what you need. Apostolic voice gets up. People get offended. Man, thrive under it. If you're more the pastoral, well then, pastor. Get a few people around you and care for them. What's the church doing about a caring ministry? I heard somebody was in hospital for a month and nobody visited them. Oh, why didn't you visit them, you ugly thing? No, I mean, I'm just, I'm not preaching now. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you the truth, okay? Maybe God's put that on your heart because you're the gift. You say, Steve, what's this going to do with revival? Let me tell you, everything. Because... If there wasn't a raging river on its way, you wouldn't need to worry about river banks. We could just idle along in our melancholy and our self-introspection and navel-gazing, sitting around, pacifying each other. But when there's a mighty river that's coming over the mountains, coming in our direction, we better make sure we've got strong river banks, sustainable, suitable, big enough, and we have to build capacity. And we see in the early church that first it was the apostles, and then it was the prophets and teachers. And then we get on a bit further, and we see in Acts chapter 1, there was grumbling in the church. Can you believe that? What kind of church is that? They were grumbling because you see a whole lot of new people got saved, and some of them, based on language difference, there was miscommunication. God forbid leadership miscommunicate things because then everything is in chaos and everybody backslides and everybody uh, wants to sue him. And eventually they go to the saints, the priests. Remember, that's the highest ranking in the kingdom, the priesthood of all believers, sons. So the apostles go to them and say, guys, it's not a clever idea that we are moving away. Sorry, not there. We are moving away from the ministry of the word and prayer and the work of the ministry uh, of preaching and whatever to, to be packing out chairs and setting up coffee bars and uh, welcoming people and doing this and doing that. We need to devote ourselves to what we call to find some people that can serve. And we see this evolved into the office of deacon. The only difference between, well, let me touch on that later. And we see that they brought a group of people that were filled with the Spirit, had wisdom, that were eager to serve. Because that, that is, other than being a born again, that's the next qualification. A willingness to serve. And then we see in Acts 14, 
that Paul and Barnabas, uh, Paul and Barnabas went up to the churches in Derby, not Derbs, Derby and Crete. And Paul even leaves Timothy in Crete. It says they went in and, and appointed elders. And Timothy goes back, Paul writes to him and says, the reason you're there is to carry on this work of setting eldership in place. Places need elders. They were usually the people with the gray hair, by the way, contrary to the hipster tradition of what an elder is. They were the people who'd had it covered a few miles in life. And if you dye your hair, no condemnation. You included. The gray amongst you, the elderly, they got some wisdom. They and they set these elders in, and then the, the, the apostles could keep going. The evangelists could keep doing what they were doing. The prophets could keep doing what they were doing. And all the time, there was stability in the church, or at least to a point. Paul has to write to these churches in Corinth and say, come on, guys, stop making such a big deal about who Apollos is and who this one is. Come on, they're just servants. Say servants. That's what the apostles are. They're servants. He says, you know, in the world, the system is that someone's in charge, he lords it over you. Okay, so that's like the best system they can have, because without that, you'd have anarchy. So that's okay. Leave them to do it their way. It's the, it's the least evil of seven other evils. So it's the best evil of seven evils. And they call it democracy, so just love them anyway. But God's government is run on theocracy. God is the boss. And Jesus gave gifts. And that, and as we study their function, we see what the apostle does. We see what the prophet does. We see what the deacon does. We see what the elder does. We see what all the priests do. A royal priesthood. Riverbanks are only needed in a time of flooding. Poor maintenance. Let me not even go down there. Let me come back to a positive subject. So I thank God that in this house I'm seeing an Ephesians 4 15 emerging. I mean, we, we've had it over the years at different seasons, and people have been sowed and gone out and gone to church. But right now, I'm, I'm happy to see that. I'm also happy we, we have a, a great eldership team. But you do know that Richard and Heather are resettling in Cape Town. They got a job transfer. I met with them this week. I said, Phew, are you leaving a big hole. Now I'm praying Dave's going to be there. Did I say that aloud? And I'm trusting that this time of spouses being apart is also coming to but that's going to require the whole church to just faith it a little bit more, not to dig into the already pummeled budget, but to trust God for that over and above, to faith for that promise, that faith promise over and above what they normally get in their fixed budget to pay their school fees, pay their fees, because that would be criminal to ask people to do that it would have to be the Holy Spirit. Okay? But no man could require that. But I think we could say, why can't we put our faith out for just, Lord, if I trust you for 500 grand and 500 grand extra comes in, I'm not buying that new pair of shoes. I'm going to stick to my budget, but that 500 grand is for the kingdom. If everybody did that, we wouldn't need this separation. We did it through a difficult time and with no begrudging, no is what it is. And God has brought us through amazing. And he'll continue, with or without. I say that humbly, but I mean it. With or without us faithing together for that little bit more, God will get us through. And then just everyone has to worry about themselves. But we see Paul writing to the church and commanding them, saying, thank you for partnering with us. Your generosity is exceedingly abundant. 
he says the churches in Macedonia gave, even though they were poor, they gave from the deep in their hearts. He says to other churches, our own hands worked amongst you because we knew you couldn't give. And we had a bull tents. And we understood that. We didn't want to, 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 to take from you. Other times he says, we would have robbed you if we never took your gift. Other times he says, we would have robbed you if we did take your gift. So there's no formula on this. There's just a heart that says, can I put a post box outside my house on the road called Faith? And say, Lord, okay, this one is going to be for you. This one is for me. I never prepared to preach this this morning. You might have guessed. Like, no, oh, 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 really? Should I get on my sermon? So they appointed elders. Acts 27. Elders. Titus. I left you in Ephesus. To, uh, in Crete to appoint elders. Then Titus goes on to... Ephesus, which was in a mess 50 years after Paul had been there. It was in a total, it was in anarchy. And Paul writes a strong letter to the elders, the deacons. The deacons wild, the elders wild. He nails it down. He almost disqualifies everybody as he pushes the button called reboot. So don't put all that stuff in. I know a lot of elders who aren't married, don't have children, and whose wives don't drink a bit of wine. Okay, moving on. So here you see Jesus being crafted in the church through the gifts that he's given, the pillars of elders and the pillars of deacons. And I'm very pleased to announce that we're going to be praying some deacons in to the church in the very near future. Um, I thought I'd do it on Father's Day. But that's a strange day to do it. I'll tell you why. Because we're a family. And don't call me Father. But I feel like I'm a kind of a dad. Don't call Janet Mom. But she's kind of a, a mother. So what do fathers and mothers have? They have a family. Why don't even call them children? Because they're adults. They have a family of adults, mature huyos, sons, not petros, no, or the other one. They're not, ba- they're not children, they're adults. And we've recognized a, a few people that are already serving and doing stuff um, in the church. We've approached them and they prayed about it. And on Father's Day, we're just going to have the, about five, six, or seven, just to, just to come and lay hands and say, thank you for the work you're doing. We want to recognize it. We want to pray for an anointing on you. Just keep doing what you're doing. We love you. Let the elders keep doing what elders do. Let Ephesians 4 giftings carry on what they're doing. And let all the priests carry on what they're doing. And the church riverbanks will be strong for this river is already within Sound distance. This river is within hearing distance. Can we stand up? I want to pray for you. As I look around at the faces here, I mostly see familiar people. But if you are not born again, means you're not in the new creation. You're still in the old creation of Adam, but the new creation was in Christ. If you're not, if you have not received his work he did on the cross for you and received that into your life, the Bible says you are still lost in your sin in first Adam. When you agree with heaven that Jesus died, was buried, and rose again, and you declare that with the faith he gives you, something shifts. And you might not feel it, you may feel it, I hope you feel it, but you are transferred from the kingdom of darkness into a kingdom of glory. You say, I've never had that happen in my life. Well, 
Well, let me tell you, all of us at some stage were faced with this decision. Every single person is faced. And if you haven't, it means you just haven't faced that decision. I want to lead you in a prayer because I don't want anybody leaving here today that's not part of this, what's being built. So just in your heart, you witnessing what I'm saying now, say, Lord Jesus Christ, I've heard this morning that in the gospel, you died for me and as me. You were buried for me and as me. And you rose again for me and as me. And I put my faith in your wind blowing into the limp sails of my boat. And I say, Holy Spirit, would you fill me right now and transform the direction of my life from as far as east is from the west. Right now, I ask and I receive. I receive. The Bible says you just have to come into agreement with somebody for that to be established. So if you pray gate prayer and you're meaning it with all your heart, just look up and make eye contact with me. I want to be in agreement with you. I want to look at you and come into agreement with you. If that's you and you said, I pray that and I meant it with all my heart, look up and make eye contact with me. And I just want you to indicate to me, if I'm looking at you right now, just say, yes, that's me. Would you pray for me? Anybody over here standing in front of you? Yes, ma'am. That's awesome. I'm going to pray for you now. Anybody in this section? Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Anybody on the side of the church? Looking at me right now, you're saying, yes. I want you to be included in that prayer. Thank you, ma'am. Anybody else standing here? Thank you, ma'am. This is going to be one of the most bravest things you're going to ever do in your life. But I'm going to ask those four people to come and stand with me right here, right now. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to let arguments dissuade you. You just come and stand with me right now. And we love you. I want to tell you we've been here. We've walked this road and right now, if you want to be 100% sure, would someone come and stand behind these precious people? Just a male on male, a female on female. And here's a young in Ganyami. <laughs> and Lord, thank you so much right now that in this church today, people said, yes. Not to becoming members of this church, but becoming members of the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. And they find themselves in a family called a church. And in that church, they will be taught and pastored. They will be shown how to hear the voice of God and speak the word of God. They will be part of the future of the kingdom of God on earth. So we just bless them right now. Even that prayer you prayed, was all that you needed to say, all you needed to do, all you needed to agree with right now. So, thank you. All you've got to do is say, thank you, Lord. I receive your free gift. Just say that. Thank you, Lord. I receive your free gift. 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 In Jesus' name. Church, let's just praise heaven. Let's just thank heaven. Or lives. They're going to be set on a new course. I wonder if the person standing with you would just connect for even two minutes afterwards and maybe get a, a contact detail so we can send them some information to encourage them. So if you come here next Sunday, have a wonderful service. And let me know how it went. <laughs> the doors will be open. The toilets will be open. There might even be coffee. But the path up to the road will be open. And during those times set, I think it was half past nine to half past ten.